Hello everyone, and welcome to today's webinar about the SAS 9.4 M7 upgrade. My name is Michael Dixon, and I'm the Managing Director here at Celerity, and I will be taking you through today's session. Before I start, I have a few housekeeping items I'd like to cover about this presentation and our webinar platform. First, today's webinar will be available on demand after the live session and will be accessible through the same link you're using now, as well as our YouTube channel. Next, we'd love to hear from you during today's presentation. If you have a question, please feel free to send it through to the Q&A tab at the top of your chat window. We'll be answering questions at the end of the session, but if we don't get to your question during today's webinar, we will be sure to follow you up afterwards. This presentation is an overview of some key aspects of the SAS 9.4 Maintenance 7 release. If you would like to dive deeper into the technical details or want information on other aspects of M7 that we aren't covering, you can find that in the What's New in SAS 9.4 documentation on the SAS website. And you can also check out the SAS Guide to Software Updates and Product Changes. So this is the seventh maintenance release of 9.4, and just a reminder that the first release of SAS 9.4 was back in July 2013. So the 9.4 platform has been around for over seven years. While we know that there are still a significant number of customers who are not yet running even maintenance six, SAS are expecting a large uptake of this particular maintenance release especially as it marks the first time that Adobe Flash has been completely removed from the platform. The key topics that I'll be covering in this presentation will be the security enhancements that are included in M7, the hot fixes and bug fixes, the product and solution enhancements, and probably the big one that a lot of people are waiting for, the removal of Adobe Flash, as well as improvements that SAS have made to the upgrade in place process. SAS have addressed security issues identified by the NIST Common Vulnerabilities Database, as well as security concerns raised by customers and internal developers. This ensures that the SAS software and any third party software provided as part of a SAS solution remain secure. SAS now also support Windows Defender Credential Guard, as well as constrained delegation for most products. The list of products that don't yet include support for constrained delegation includes SAS Access Interface to Hadoop, SAS Access Interface to Impala, Access Interface to JDBC, Access to Oracle, Access to PostgreSQL, the SAS Data Loader for Hadoop, SAS Plugins for Hadoop, and the SAS Laser Analytics Server on 9.4. SAS Note 63143 provides further information around this. Apache Struts is an old Java web application framework used to build web applications, and this has been replaced in many instances with a more up-to-date technology. That being said, the use of Struts continues to exist in some products such as the BI Portal, the VA Hub, and Web Report Studio. A number of third-party components have also been upgraded. So we see the SAS web server is now running Apache 2.4.43 with OpenSSL 1.0.2U. Tomcat is now at version 8.5.54.B. And the TC server equivalent is now running version 3.2.22. Postgres has also been updated and is now at version 12.3 with M7. Although whether you get this as part of an upgrade will depend on how you actually do your upgrade. If you perform your upgrade by installing Fresh or using the SAS migration utility to essentially upgrade to a new machine, you will get Postgres 12.3 right off the bat. However, if you do an upgrade in place to get M7, you will still be running your original version of Postgres, most likely version 9. 
The choice will then be yours as to whether you want to upgrade Postgres or not. If you do, there is an upgrade script along with a number of steps required to manually upgrade Postgres to 12.3. And lastly, the SAS private JRE in M7 is now at version 1.8.0 under 4.2.5.2 for Windows and Linux. There have been around 125 hotfixes released since M6 came out in November 2018. And these are included in M7 as well as all the previous hotfixes. These hotfixes address around 200 bugs and enhancements within the SAS software. Also included as part of M7 is an updated platform suite for SAS consisting of IBM Spectrum LSF, Process Manager and Platform Web Services. And this has also had the effect of introducing some scheduling enhancements. Enhancements have been made to about 70 different SAS offerings. And at a high level, this affects 10 SAS analytics offerings, 42 offerings in the data management and access space, 12 visualization offerings, four decision management offerings, and two in the risk space. Taking a look at these product areas a bit closer, we find within the analytics space, this includes an update to SAS Forecast Studio to allow it to use integrated Windows authentication when credential card is enabled. We also see a major change with clients that were previously available via Java Web Start. In March 2018, Oracle announced that it would start deprecating Java Web Start functionality, so SAS has taken note of this and removed Java Web Start functionality. This means that if you were to browse to where you would normally find the Java Web Start page for clients such as SAS Forecast Studio, Forecast Project Manager, Time Series Studio, and Enterprise Miner, you will now be given a full client download link so you can download and install the full Java client. When it comes to SAS data management, we now have new DI library designers for Spark, Snowflake, Salesforce.com, Google BigQuery, MongoDB, and Yellowbrick. There are also 10 new metadata bridges, as well as new SAS access interfaces for MongoDB, Salesforce, Spark, Yellowbrick, and in database technologies for Spark. As many of you will know, support for Adobe Flash will be end of life after the 31st of December 2020. So SAS has been hard at work removing Flash from their software. M7 will be the first maintenance release that contains no Flash dependencies. There are four paths that Flash dependent products within SAS have taken. They've either been rewritten, rewritten using HTML5, had their functionality replaced with CI360, had their functionality replaced with VIA solutions, or that particular solution or product just hasn't been carried forward as of M7. Some examples of products that are no longer available and the suggested replacements for those are contextual analysis. This has been replaced by visual text analytics 8.3 or later. Digital marketing has been replaced by engage email 19.03 or later. For customer link analytics, you can consider modernizing with CI360 or moving to visual data mining and machine learning. Strategy management, you could consider modernizing with visual analytics. There's also some optional components of data management and the data quality suites that have been removed, such as visual process orchestration, data management console, and SAS Web Studio. And in Enterprise BI Server, the BI Dashboard Designer has been removed. SAS have also put a huge effort into identifying and addressing problems that have been reported with their upgrade in place process. 
that people have reported with previous maintenance releases. As installs and upgrades are one of the core services that we offer, we have been neck deep in this process from the very beginning, and I have to say SAS have really done a fantastic job at improving this process. Some of the improvements include the SAS 9 system evaluation tool, which is part of the SAS content assessment tool that people can use to assess their system for how ready you are to migrate to VIA. They've also improved the SAS 9 upgrade in place backup and recovery documentation. They've also made improvements to the default JVM settings. Um, they will also suggest to you changes to make to PostgreSQL so that the number of connections that's needed during the upgrade process is sufficient. Um, they'll also give you suggestions about the Gemfire settings to change. And another cool thing is if the upgrade process is interrupted at any stage, then the SAS deployment manager will now restart the process if you have to get out of it or if it crashes for any reason and you have to restart the process. It will just pick up from where you last were. Another great improvement is with the hotfixes. So just before we do an upgrade in place or an upgrade, we can go into the depot and ask it to download the latest hotfixes available. And as we do the upgrade in place, it will actually apply those hotfixes for us. Previously, the hotfixes that it would apply during this process were only hotfixes that were applied to the SAS home location. So any hotfixes that affected the configuration weren't automatically applied because they would sometimes have manual steps required to be done after they were applied. Now the process will actually apply those and also add those manual post installation steps for us in the documentation that it produces. So we can finalize those hotfix steps as part of the upgrade process. As I previously mentioned, installs and upgrades are one of the core services that we offer and our staff have been trained and certified by the SAS Institute. As we see M7 being pretty much a required upgrade for many people, we are offering a fixed price service to do this upgrade for you. For $9,000 plus GST, we will upgrade your existing single server SAS environment to M7. This service includes a customized pre-install checklist for you and your IT staff so that we can hit the ground running. We will upgrade your SAS software to M7, including any hotfixes that have been released after M7. We will also upgrade your Postgres to version 12.3 we we'll also provide instructions on how to upgrade any client software that you've got, such as Enterprise Guide, so that IT can follow those and roll those out as well. We also provide you with a set of validation tests that we have performed to ensure that your system is up and functioning as it should be after the upgrade. You also get perpetual access to your customized online knowledge base, which will contain your install and upgrade documentation. And you also get 30 days of our SAS administration and support service. If you'd like to take advantage of this service or to find out more, please visit our website at celeritysas.com. Thank you again for taking the time to be with us for this webinar. I'll now take a few seconds to check if there are any questions.